The sun emits radiation, which is the main source of energy that supports life on Earth. Food chains visualize how the energy from the sun is transferred from organism to organism. We will use a simple example where we have the dandelion plant, which is consumed by the wild rabbit, and the wild rabbit is being consumed by the fox. At the bottom of every food chain is an organism that can make its own food, and we call this the producer. The dandelion uses solar energy to photosynthesize and produce glucose. However, not all the solar energy that gets to the dandelion plant is converted into chemical energy in the form of glucose. For now, let's just keep in mind that as we move up the food chain, energy is lost and not all the energy is transferred from organism to organism. The first stage consumer is either a herbivore or an omnivore. Herbivores mainly feed on plant matter and omnivores can feed on both plant and animal matter. In our case, the first stage consumer is the rabbit. The fox, a carnivore, which mainly consumes animal matter, is the second stage consumer in this food chain. Other terms can be used to describe food chains. For example, each stage can be described as a trophic level. And instead of a first, second and third stage consumer and so on, we use the terms primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer and even a quaternary consumer. Here are some examples of food webs, which are very similar to food chains, but they can also show how more than one organism may rely on a food source. But they can be labelled exactly the same way. You just count how many organisms are in one chain within the web. You have the producer, first stage consumer, second stage consumer, third stage consumer and fourth stage consumer. Or we can use the terms producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer and quaternary consumer. To help us understand how energy is lost as we move up the food chain, we will use some oversimplified numbers and some made up energy values. Let's imagine that the dandelion plant has 1000 kilojoules of solar energy reaching it in spring and summer, but it will only be able to convert a small percentage of that solar energy that reaches it for glucose production via photosynthesis. And one reason for this being is that simply photosynthesis is not 100% efficient. So for now, let's just say that 100 kilojoules is converted into glucose. The rabbit won't get 100 kilojoules from that dandelion when it eats it. The rabbit will probably only consume certain parts of the plant and is really only after whatever stored chemical energy the plant has to offer. The plant, however, did not use all that 100 kilojoules of glucose just for making and storing chemical energy in the form of starch, etc. The plant will use some of that glucose for respiration and energy is lost as heat during this process. The plant would have probably produced during the spring and summer petals and seeds and waste products that the rabbit won't have eaten. The rabbit in this case receives 10 kilojoules of energy from the dandelion. When the fox consumes the rabbit, it can't digest every single part of the rabbit. The rabbit will not have used all the 10 kilojoules of energy it received from, from the dandelion for producing muscle tissue, which includes repairing cells and growing new cells and tissues. It too will have respired and produced heat energy, which can't be eaten. You can't eat heat. The rabbit will also have produced waste products that again is energy lost and not passed on to the fox. Also, the rabbit will use some of that 10 kilojoules of energy that it got from the plant for movement and reproduction. And again, this energy is not available for the fox. So the fox only receives one kilojoule of energy from consuming the rabbit. Hopefully you can start to see why food chains in any habitat can't support endless food chains with carnivores eating carnivores eating carnivores and so on because of the energy losses. You also need to be aware that although at each stage energy is lost by uneaten parts of prey and waste, decomposers such as bacteria and fungi can consume that lost chemical energy for their own growth and reproduction. Another great way to visualize energy being transferred between organisms is using pyramids of numbers and pyramids of biomass. Pyramids of biomass always will have the traditional pyramid shape. Take a food chain that has an oak tree as the producer. The oak tree's biomass is 15,000 kilograms. As we move up the food chain, 
we observe a drop in biomass at each stage as energy is lost at each stage. The caterpillar, the primary consumer, in this case, is 150 kilograms worth of biomass. Obviously, this is thousands of individual caterpillars. The blue tits that consume the caterpillars have a total biomass of 5 kilograms. This again is quite a few individual blue tits. And finally, at the top of the food chain is the sparrowhawk, and that has a total biomass of one kilogram. And this won't be that many individual sparrowhawks. If we now use the same food chain, but construct a pyramid of numbers, we don't always get the traditional shape because the number represents the number of individuals of that species. So there is only one tree in this food chain. 5,000 caterpillars, 50 blue tits, two sparrowhawks. You need to be able to label and construct your own pyramids of numbers and your own pyramids of biomass for your exam. Finally, a higher tier skill that you need is how to calculate the efficiency of energy transfers between trophic levels. Simply, to calculate the efficiency, you divide the later stage in the food chain by the earlier stage and then multiply by 100%. If you have a bigger number on the bottom, the denominator, then you know you are going in the right direction. Also, you should never get an answer bigger than 100%. If you do, you have made a mistake. Here is an example. If you have 250 kilojoules of energy entering a deer, and then 5 kilojoules is passed on to the wolf when it consumes the deer, we put the later stage number on the top, the numerator, and divide it by the earlier stage, the deer, which is 250 kilojoules, and then multiply that by 100% to get an answer of 2%. In the next lesson, we will look more closely at decomposition and the carbon cycle.